popular competitive sports in Australia would have to be high speed boat racing. And last weekend the season opened in Melbourne with the first race meeting. Always keen to have a go, our own Andrew Harris was there for his first ever attempt at boat racing. And to tell us how he fared and to show himself in action, would you welcome Andrew Harris. <laughs> I must say congratulations because uh, this is rather good news, but we won't tell them the tag yet. No, no. But what, what gave you the idea to get into high speed boat racing? Was it about the only thing you hadn't done? No, no. Oh, there's still lots to go yet. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I've got to tell you that won't, we won't be working next year. <laughs> but uh, you'll all remember that I uh, did a thing where we invited everybody out there to come along and uh, attend a, a driving course. Yes, right. That's what? right. And you had all those people yep. turn up at Sandown, yeah. And uh, one of the ladies was so pleased with the day, she said, My husband races boats. Have you ever had a go at that? Mm -hmm. And I said, no, uh, is it very exciting? And she said, oh, relatively so, why don't you have a look at the tape? So they sent me around this tape to have a look at, and I thought, oh my God. Okay. You know, this was at Lake Boga last year, there was quite a serious accident because these boats can just flip off the water and turn upside down and do all sorts of dreadful things. Right. And there was someone killed and uh, a couple of people very seriously injured. My God, so that's what turned you on when you yes. saw all this action going on. So we've okay. got a film clip of that, I think. This was at Lake Boga uh, last year. That particular fellow was flipped out of his boat and the other boat that came along behind him, the propeller, hit him in the head and killed him instantaneously. Yeah, yeah. You've so got to remember it's dangerous this. as motor racing. Oh, it's more dangerous. Is it? Because if, uh, once you're out of the boat, it's very, very hard to identify. You're doing 80, 90 miles an hour. It's very hard to identify a little object in the water. And there's another spin out and he came out of the boat. He was badly injured but not killed. So I thought to myself, Mike, that looks pretty dangerous. We'll have to get out and have a crack at them. Yeah. Now, what about entering the race? Is it similar to entering a motor race, motor car race? Almost exactly the same. You've got to go through all the, the normal procedures. You've got to go and have a medical. If I have another medical, if I die of a heart attack, there's a lot of doctors we can sue. <laughs> right. You've got to have your medical. You've got to apply for your licence, pay your licence fees, and attend for the normal practice the day before. Now, to put something special in it for everybody else, the most important thing is to, uh, I think, with these segments, is to show the public what it's like actually being involved. So we took a camera in the boat, so all of you out there can have a really good look at it. Right. Get the feeling of it all. That was in the practice session, obviously, during the actual race. I couldn't take anybody in the boat. Right. Also, the day before, during practice, I was saying to them, uh, or they're all saying to me now, Andrew, you've got to be careful and cautious and don't expect too much in your first time out. These boats are quite a handful. What, you've, there's no gears in the boat. You've got an accelerator. The boats do about 85 miles an hour. So you've, you've just got your accelerator and a little trim tab on the left foot that'll keep the nose flat on the water. So I went out and had my practice and they said, now tomorrow, just get out there and run the middle of the field and have a good time. And, don't be too worried. So okay. when you see the film clip, it's important. The first time you see me in the boat... Um, well, that's the practice run. That's the practice run right. when you see the camera in the you boat. You only had one practice run? One practice run the day oh, before. Oh, yeah, boy. Right. So, okay. Let's have a look. The practice run and then the race. Today, gentlemen, all the races are a four and a half lap. As with all forms of motorsport, it seems they have to have a driver's meeting to make sure everyone understands the sport before we take off. And motorboat racing is no exception. So let's listen into the briefing. Now, if you see a red flag, it means there's something real bad somewhere. And we want you to stop immediately. Now how you stop is up to you. Will you pull the naughty hole switch out, turn the ignition off, but we want you to stop dead if there's a red flag. It doesn't mean to slow up and come back to the pits. It means stop dead. You could run over a driver in the water without seeing him. Now we're going to enforce this stricter than anything else. Stop dead for a red flag. Any questions, gentlemen? How dangerous is motorboat driving? Well, motorboat driving is, uh, it is dangerous. You don't go into these sort of sports unless you're prepared to accept the responsibilities. And uh, we have uh, fellas, you know, that are very keen to win. We have other fellas that go out there for a fun day. But uh, what you've got to realise with boats is you haven't got any brakes. And uh, if you get caught in a corner and your boat happens to spin or come off the wash of another boat, anything can happen.
Chris, thanks very much for the line of the boat for the race today. What sort of things do I have to uh, do differently in this boat than you would in a normal speedboat? Well, firstly, you'd be travelling a lot faster than you would in a normal, normal ski boat. Um, the water conditions are here exceptionally rough, so you've got to watch out for the, the big holes that are going to appear in front of you. Um, and generally, you know, just, just be cautious. What sort of safety equipment do we, is fitted in the boat to protect me and people like me who get in? Well, you have to wear a, a properly fitted harness type uh, life jacket, which um, protects your, your chest in case of a frontal you know, collision, uh, and also a, a helmet to protect your head naturally. There's a uh, cutout switch on the engine, isn't there? What's, oh, the, what's the purpose right. of that? Well, in the event of you being thrown out of the boat, the ignition automatically cuts off. Uh, and stops the boat dead in the water. So and notice it doesn't I'm... run you over. Yeah. <laughs> lastly, what sort of speeds can I uh, expect to achieve down the straights? Well, up the back straight here with a little bit of rough water under you to lift the boat, get it out of the water, you should touch on 80 miles an hour. I can hardly wait. As they come down, Carousel Straight, the flag's down and they're racing. And it looks like Turbulence is on the inside. As they head into the bottom, boys, the three boats are locked together. The three boats are locked together. Scorcher coming in second, then Scorcher's not going to let Turnbull's get too far away from him. <laughs> you got wetter than I did. I think the uh, um, it's an ex-Melbourneite. I must say the most dangerous thing you've ever done was going to Albert Park Lake. It was. Oh, oh boy. Four feet deep and really murky. You reckon the air is bad? Yeah, you could, <laughs> it's could not be in the same league. Could be full of anything. Now, you won your first race and they threw you in the water. Yes. Would I, as I've heard it, I've heard a bit of feedback from a few people down there. You weren't terribly popular for winning your first race. They didn't oh, no, no, like no, they, that. They don't like that. They awarded me the club, <laughs> the club champion trophy and everything for the day, but I really got determined on this one. They were nothing against them and they really were good. Scorcher Transmission supplied the boat and said they'd pay for it if they wreck it and Simmons Wheels provided everything for us, so they ensured it, and everyone was tremendously nice to you. Yeah. But all the way through the day, they're all saying, because it is their sport and they're closely guarding it, they all said, now, just be careful and don't worry, and don't worry if you're down the back of the field, just sit there and enjoy the drive. And the more I heard of this from everyone, the more I thought, well, you know, we're out there driving for the washer, let's get out there and really have a go. And the fellow who you saw me pass just on that last lap was trying so hard to beat me as I passed him into the corner, he blew his engine up. So I was all out determined to win this, so for all of you, there we go. Ah, don't mix with me, Buster. <laughs> but anyway, they're, they, they're a nice crowd, and that's beautiful of them to have been so supportive and give you the chance. How scary is it, really? I mean, compared to motor racing, for example. Well, I've had my one go at it, I don't think I'd have another go. Really? You really have that much admiration for them oh, doing it, do you? You're very insecure. You're sitting in a seat, in a, motor, in a racing car, you'd all understand you're fully strapped in and and you're nice yeah. and you feel secure and you've got this big frame around you and if something goes wrong well you're pretty well protected in those motorboats you, you're literally sitting there on a little seat hanging onto a steering wheel no straps no harnesses nothing doing 80 miles an hour in the water and that's fast it really is you probably got a bit of the impression when you saw the camera in the boat that yeah. you're, you're really flying across the water and it only takes one wave or one piece of wake and you're upside down out of the boat and dead so i think i've had my go you've all had a look at it now that's enough that's enough you're retiring yeah. retiring ahead of your time andrew harris ladies and gentlemen thank you for being here. Thanks, Andrew. We take a break. John Derham and the man from Snowy River. And